Hello and welcome to episode 11 of this uh, Let's Program a Battle Space game. And uh, what I've done in the absence of uh, while the video was paused is I spent 20 minutes creating an explosion effect. Uh, and I put it in this prefab subdirectory called Particle Effects. And it's called Explode Core. And I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I also went ahead and hooked the ships up to it. So the way I did that is I just created a new... Uh, here it is a new variable in the ship object that lets us assign the, the explosion on a ship-by-ship -ship basis so that we can have different explosions for different ships if we'd like. And then down in the take damage section, I just check and see whether or not we've exceeded our max hull damage. And if we have, I create that, that fabrication and then I tell it to destroy the fabrication in 15 seconds, which gives the particle effect enough time to, to do its thing, to run its course. And then I just destroy uh, the, the game object instantly. So the ship itself vanishes and it leaves behind an explosion. Um, you need to be careful when you use destroy inside of a script because if you do this then that means that the script will be destroyed but the game object will remain and that's not what you want. You want this. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at what that is going to look like by going back into Unity. I'm going to adjust the maximum hull value here down to 30 just so we can make it explode more easily. So let's cruise on over to our test ship here and uh, see what's cooking. So there you are. Uh, if you're wondering how I did that particle effect, it's actually a two-tiered particle effect. Uh, this is the core particle effect and... Uh, oh, that's not the right... That's, sorry, that's the damage chamber. This is the core particle effect. Uh, and it's just got a, a couple of random particles that emit out at time zero uh, and have a random lifetime. And at the end of their lifetime, they emit two more particle systems, and that's the actual explosion thing. Uh, that's just where you create your own particles however you'd like, but uh, sub emitters are great. Uh, don't go too hog wild because you can easily have a cascade situation where you have too many particle effects being spawned. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to talk about what happens when the ship is actually destroyed, because as you can see, when we destroy the ship, that's all well and good, but. Uh, uh, there's really nothing that happens after we do that. I mean, it just we continue to fly around with a with no particular uh, nothing else to do. We're kind of just stuck in this empty void. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to switch away from the battle system and we're going to swap over to the navigation system, where we'll be able to customize our ship and uh, uh, crew members and fly around the galaxy and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, so that's where we're going to start to get into uh, GUIs. I've already created a new uh, a new empty scene called Navi, so let's just go pop over into Navi here, and you can see it's completely empty. I haven't done anything to it, uh, and what we need to do is uh, figure out what sort of interface we want our ship to have uh, when it's in navigation mode. And this is a system. This is a situation where there's a lot of complexity in how you can do this. Um, we have layered menus, but do we use Windows for that? Because if you use Windows, then you can't drag between them very easily. Um, do we have a set position for our various components, or do we allow them to be moved around by the player, either through a menu or via the drag-and-drop functionality that comes with the drag-and-drop windows? Um, do we use icons for everything, or do we use words? Uh, there's a whole bunch of designing the user interface that's outside of battle is just as important as designing the user, user, user interface inside of battle. Uh, but one thing that is clear is that we're going to need a whole bunch of assets at this point. We need to have uh, faces for our crew, we need to have pictures for our various components we might be adding and deleting, we need to have some kind of map that we can traverse. Uh, and the order in which we tackle these is um, more or less irrelevant. We can tackle them in almost any order because it's all going to have to be built before any of it is any good. Um, but for for the purposes of, of making this game interesting, we're going to go ahead and do the navigation system first. And that involves just creating arbitrary star maps. Now as you might remember, in the other game, we actually, in the, sorry, in the other scene, we actually created lights. Uh, like this, point lights, and then we set the range to zero, and we added in uh, a where are you light flare, and we added in this small flare. 
Now, while that may or may not be suitable for an engine decal, it is very suitable for a star. So we're not going to worry about having uh, uh, specific icons for every star. We're just going to have a light, and then we can change the color of the light and change the intensity of the light, and we can even do things like make it flicker. Uh, so it's going to, to be very useful to us. And I actually forgot to check whether or not there is actually, if you can just add a light, a, a flare separate from a light. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, there's actually the option to add a lens flare separate from a light, so let's go ahead and see whether or not we can do that. Because that'll actually make it a little bit cheaper uh, in terms of uh, how it'll run. So let's go ahead and add a small flare to this. Yeah, so we won't even use the lights. We'll just flat out use the lens flare object. Um, and in fact, you can do that for your engines if you have no interest in a light. Uh, so using that, we can come up with something uh, that will we'll scatter stars around our star map. So for that, we're going to need a new script here in the scripts directory. We're going to use star script, but we're also going to need a star map script like so. So the star script, we'll go ahead and drag that onto our game object, and we'll rename our game, game object to star. Um, and we won't actually have that star script do anything just yet. In the long run, it'll hold a seed value, which will ensure that the star, when it gets entered, always has the same default setup in terms of planets and so on and so forth. Uh, and we'll also store the changes that happen due to your interference um, in inside that script somewhere. But for now we can just say a star is a star and then we can open up, uh, put the star map on the main camera because that's an easy place for it and open it up. There we go. So our star map, the first thing we're going to need is uh, a fabrication object for the star. So let's go ahead and make that star a prefab by just dropping it in here and then deleting it off the screen. And then we can add the prefab to the star fab slot, like so. And then we're also going to have a list. We'll need to have a generic, add, add in using system collections generic so we can use generic lists. And we'll have public list star stars equals new list. Uh, and we're also going to add a public rect uh, star map bounds equals new rect, and then we'll just go from negative 100, negative 100, to positive 100, positive 100, uh, and we'll want public int num stars, and we'll set that equal to 100. Uh, and those can be modified here in the editor. So you can change that however you'd like. Um, you don't have to re you don't have to change it here in the script. And in fact, if you change it here in the script, it's not going to change because those are now editor values. Uh, so if I were to change this to 20, it would remain 100 because it's 100 in the editor. So here in start, we're just going to go ahead and uh, put those stars in. Uh, now you can do all sorts of star clustering. I'm just going to do it randomly. Wow, I screwed that up. Let's try that again. All right, so new star, uh, we need to have a position for it. So let's just go ahead and uh, I actually don't think that there is, um, uh, let's turn that uh, there's no, I uh, wonder if there's, I was kind of hoping that there would be a, uh, uh, random within rect command just so I wouldn't have to write it, but that's okay, it's not that complicated. So we do our vector3 star pause equals new vector3, and then we get to the uh, star map bounds dot center dot x, or just uh, just dot x, plus uh, uh, random dot value times star map bounds dot width, 
And now y is the vertical axis, so this is going to be 0. And then over here we're going to do star map bounds dot y plus random dot value times star map bounds dot height. There we go. And then we're just going to say that new star dot transform dot position equals star pause and stars dot add new star. All right, so let's take a look and see how that ends up looking when we hit play. So you can see that we have a good star map here. Uh, actually, it's a terrible star map because the stars are very widely spaced. Uh, and that's because our rect is very large and the number of stars we have is really, really quite small. A um, hundred stars is not as many as you might think. Uh, now, if we start to add loads of stars, we're going to hit some slowdown in terms of uh, rendering problems. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do that. And one way is we can use star chunks in the same way that we use mesh chunks. Uh, we could split up the star map into sectors. Uh, we're not going to do that right now because it actually takes a lot of stars to slow this thing down. Um, but we are going to go ahead and add the stars to a container object uh, so that we can keep track of them easier and then break them into chunks later. So we're going to call the container object a sector. And we're actually going to move the star map over onto the sector object. And we're going to change this value to, to 1000. And we're going to see uh, in here new star dot transform dot parent equals transform and that will make all of the stars beneath the sector object uh, so that's that's much much more dense and you can see that if we were wandering around there's a, there's some some clear uh, paths that we might take uh, but we are seeing oh no wait we're, we are seeing some mouse malfunction because I got an old mouse and it's starting to degrade but it's actually the the star map itself is not particularly slowed down uh, the camera is kind of arbitrarily placed and bad, um, and we'll have to fix that next time. This time I just wanted to do this basic star map creation. And there's lots of things we can do that we will be doing in order to make it so that it adapts to, where the, to how far away the camera is and how these stars look, and displays routes between them and so on and so forth. But that's going to wait until next time. I wanted to keep this episode reasonable. So I showed you how to make ships explode, and we created a new scene, and I made the scene have a star map. Next episode, we will put our ship in that star map and navigate around. Hope to see you then.